Black Lives Matter leader endorses Trump. Of Watson, young black men and women shot. But tonight, Fisher making national headlines, using his voice to endorse Donald Trump for president. Trump has done more for the black community than I can any president I can think of in my lifetime. It's a bad look for uh, Rhode Island, this period, not just BLM. Rhode Island Black Lives Matter founder brother Gary Dantzler, disgusted by Mark Fisher's comments, calling it a major setback for all that Black Lives Matter stands for. It's an insult to the African American community, and we love our black and brown people, and we don't have nothing against Donald Trump, but he stands for what he stands. And we stand for what we stand for. That you have good and you got bad and you got evil. Black Lives Matter uh, leader endorses and Waka Flocka. Black people are waking up to the two-tiered. First of all, they see the two-tiered justice system. They see that for years that a, a corrupt system persecuted blacks, persecuted Martin Luther King, tried to, the government, the federal government, which most of the time were Democrats, were used to uh, persecute, and, and, and now they see that Donald Trump did nothing wrong, but his business are being taken, trying to be taken from him. He's being, uh, for, for using his freedom of speech to challenge elections, he's being destroyed. Black people are turning. Major black leaders are endorsing Trump. It's a sign of a black awakening. What is good, YouTube family? It's your boy Rashad with the Black Anomaly Rising Channel. So, today we got some bombshell news even though this news is actually old, I actually heard about this like a long time ago, but more people are talking about it now, and I'm pretty sure I did not make a video about this. So a BLM leader, Mark Fisher, has come out in, well, an ex-BLM leader, has come out and says he supports Donald Trump, basically because he knows that majority of other candidates are trash. Now, I do think that there are some other good folks on the conservative side as you all if you've been watching my channel for a while know that i support vivek ramaswamy and i think DeSantis would also be pretty decent but nobody else so i'm not really down for nikki haley tim scott definitely not chris christie that guy's like totally off his rocker um but trump vivek and DeSantis in that order okay those are people i support as far as the democrat party side none of them because while some of them may actually be decent candidates on the whole uh you know give or take pretty much everybody's shilling for joe biden and that to me comes across as fake and i just cannot support people who are being fake at least on the conservative side they are somewhat being critical of one another but everybody's standing behind Joe Biden, ignoring the inflation issue, ignoring uh, all the other issues as it relates to the economy, the housing market, interest rates, immigration. They're basically putting their head, head in the sand and saying Joe Biden's doing a phenomenal job. That's what pretty much any Democrat I could think of is doing. And that really irks me. The only people who aren't doing it is people who are running against them. But anybody who's not running directly against Joe Biden is just shilling for him and it irritates me to know and a lot of freaking uh just different news media is doing it a lot of different celebrities are doing it and a lot of the voters are also doing it putting their head in the sand you bring up any criticism they just ignore it yeah da, 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 i can't hear you it doesn't exist they don't they don't pay attention they close their eyes close their ears it's like they don't see anything wrong and everything's kumbaya <laughs> like the price of everything is fine what are you talking about what do you mean <laughs> right that's basically what they're doing and i'm like okay mental issues mental gymnastics okay i'm not playing those games i need to get this economy back on track okay y'all playing with my money my mama's money my sister's money y'all playing with everybody's money and I'm, I don't play these games, okay? So we need to get things back on track. And I want to see what this guy's talking about. I'm going to play a short clip for y'all before I get too deep into it. Take a look. You, uh, a BLM leader, and you're now endorsing Donald Trump, saying he's the best candidate we have. Why do you think he is the best candidate that we have? Because everybody else sucks. <laughs> so is he just the best of a bad group? I mean, is he still, is he not that great either, but he's just like better than the rest? Well, you know, I like Trump, you know, um, personally. And I think right now who we have sitting in the Oval Office is just a deep, 
disappointment. You know, I deeply um, have disdain for him, and 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 I, I really dislike the vice president as well. What what is it that why how why do you not like them versus like Donald Trump? I would well, imagine because- you're you're alone in this. Do you feel alone? In this viewpoint, in the world that you're in, being in the BLM movement, no, I feel like no. the tide is starting to turn. I feel like really? a lot of black people are starting to pivot off of that democratic plantation for so long. Uh, we've been slaves to that uh, party, you know. Actually, we've been mental slaves, uh, afraid to get off of that plantation because, uh, you know, we've been used and abused for so long at that party. They don't value our vote. Uh, their policies are basically. Um, racist policies, and I believe it's a racist party that strikes at the heart of the, the black family and the nuclear family in general. And I believe Donald Trump is, he's the opposite. He's, he's going to tell you how, how it is. He's going to give it to you straight. He's not going to, um, you know, uh, be a hypocrite and, and, you know, stab you in the back like the Democratic Party loves to do. So as you can see, he's pretty firm on what he's saying now. He didn't really go into a lot of specifics. But even with that still, he's basically just saying a quiet part out loud. A lot of people don't really know a whole lot about politics to begin with, but they know one thing. Joe Biden's literally falling over himself. He's, he's tripping and falling. I mean, he could, dude could barely freaking move around, could barely put sentences together. It is just a joke. Like, he doesn't command respect. We're the laughing stock of the world. And that's why I think a lot of these bad things are happening with Russia getting bucked with Ukraine and deciding this time to make their move and all of this stuff with Hamas and Israel and all of this was not happening under Trump. That doesn't mean that it's impossible for it to happen, but I'm just calling a spade a spade. So real quick here, let's go ahead and react. I'm going to react with you all this time to a clip from Fox where they're directly interviewing him. I believe this interview just happened within the last 24 hours. So this will be the first time I'm seeing this. Let's get into it. Now to this, the co-founder of Black Lives Matter, Rhode Island, is endorsing former President Trump and calling out the Democrats for what he calls years of racist policies. And he's not alone in his criticism. President Biden faces dismal approval numbers among black voters in key swing states. Joining us now, the co-founder of Black, Black Lives Matter, that includes Island, me. Mark Fisher. Mark, thanks so much for joining the program. Um, you know, this is my favorite story of the day. Because <laughs> it like identifies with what I've seen in the barbershop. All the brothers, for some reason right now, are turning tides right now. And I, I just wonder, what is the big reason? I think, personally, it's the duplicity of the Democrats. Mm. The hypocrisy. Um, we're not stupid. The brothers are not stupid. We, we understand when someone's for us and when someone is not. And it's obvious that the Democratic Party is not for us. Yeah, I, I can't. Their, be- their, their policies actually strike at the heart of the black family and the nuclear family. Yeah, so, you know, you were part of Black Lives Matter. Uh, you founded it there. And now you're saying, you're, you're not saying the entire Republican Party, you're saying Donald Trump. So what is it about Donald Trump? Is it the economics? Uh, you noted the black family. What is it going to take for him to sure up this support amongst uh, black voters? Well, I just, I just think that it's going to take information. A lot of people are misinformed. They don't really understand because they don't educate themselves on, on Donald Trump as a person and his history. Um, but if they do that, and it's going to take, you know, leaders, educated leaders, getting the word out there, um, I think that it, it'll happen on its own and it'll be organic because, um, personally, I love the man. I mean, how could you not like if, if a real man? Uh, how could you not relate to someone like that? <clears throat> yeah, he, he watches every morning, so I'm sure he's cheering a, a, as you're saying this. We looked at some of the polls for Trump over uh, over Biden in the battleground states. In 2020, it was 8%. Now in 2023, he has 22%. And that's just not black men. So uh, election, the election is right around the corner. If you had the opportunity to talk to the former president, I'm sure he's watching right now. What would you tell him? Call me. I'm my cell phone, man. I stump for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I stump for Trump. Mark, uh, I- I'm fascinated by you. Wh- why did you end up l- leaving Black Lives Matter? Or are you still affiliated with it? No, 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 I'm still affiliated with it. Um, 
all day it, because the thing about it is i'm my message that i preach and, and and that i tout is unity it's a message of unity it's unity driven i want to bring together all the marginalized groups from the, the margins and bring them to the center because we're stronger together as a as a one nation under uh indivisible under god Mark Fisher, I, I think all Americans can go with a message of unity. We thank you so much for coming on the program. I hope you'll come back and check in with us. I appreciate you. Keep up the good work, Lawrence. You got it, brother. See, the only thing here that I wish he would do is go into more specifics in regard to, like, what Trump has done. Because he's talking about educating people. This is one of the things I want to do on this channel. That's one of the reasons I started this channel, because I just got so tired of the nonsense. First off, I had a point in my life where... I was lesser educated and I was falling for a lot of the stupid gymnastics and political theater games that a lot of Democrats, especially in Congress, like to play. But it's just gotten so egregious and so obvious. It's way more obvious, in my opinion, than it ever was before. I mean, because, you again, floundering economy, high interest rates literally open border you just walk right in and if somebody tells you to stop and you just keep walking past they're not supposed to chase after you like it's insane cash and release so if you do catch somebody right you're supposed to release them the only people who I'm aware of that they don't really staunchly go after is people that are known like terrorists and uh, people that are, you know are known like murderers and that's if they happen to know what if you don't know you you telling me like every single person that's a potential terrorist is on the watch list? Every single person that potentially done kill somebody in cold blood, you have a record of it? A lot of these people don't have any records, right? So real quick, before we kind of wrap this video, I want to just go over, I actually pulled this stuff up ahead of time. So there's a website, trumpwhitehousearchives.gov. So there's a bunch of stuff on this website. It's like a lot of stuff, so I'm not going to go over all of it. But I'm just going over some stuff that he's that Trump has done for black people uh, that's very specific. And I wanted to show y'all on the screen so y'all can see I'm not just making it up, <laughs> right? This is a, stuff is a lot of people's common knowledge to a lot of people, right? So, uh, real quick, uh, okay, prioritize support for historically back, black colleges and universities, okay? So, uh, he signed into law the Future Act, making permanent 200. 55 million in annual funds for HBCUs and increasing funds for federal Pell Grant program. Okay, so historically, HBCUs, like, they had to get this money approved every year, right? Uh, but Trump, uh, or at least every couple of years, but Trump literally made it permanent. Now, does that mean that it can't be changed at some point if somebody, you know, a president or something decides to change it? Sure, they could change it again, but I find that to be unlikely because that'll be bad optics politically for whoever decides to do that, right? But this is something that only Trump did. Obama could have done this. He did, right? Bill Clinton could have done it. George Bush could have done it. But Trump specifically did this. That's one thing, okay? Uh, so I think this next one is in regard to the economy and jobs, right? So unemployment rate for literally everyone, including African-Americans, <laughs> me and uh, my family, right? And uh, most of the people I know, uh, unemployment rate was down, right? Poverty rates for African Americans and Hispanics reached record lows. All factual. Nobody's going to debate you on these uh, items. They're just going to say, oh, he's racist. <laughs> Everybody's going to go nuts. But when it comes to the actual facts, numbers in this case don't lie. Can numbers be manipulated in little ways? Yes. But if somebody just asks you, hey, were African Americans with the unemployment rate lower? Yes. Was uh, was black business? Uh, were there more black businesses created and thriving more during the Trump administration? Yes, absolutely. Right. So again, it doesn't lie. I'm not going to go over every bullet point here. Right. Tax cuts, tax cuts, and jobs act. So Democrats did not support the tax cuts and jobs act mainly because it supported tax cuts for. Uh, everyone, including uh, big corporations and if you made over a certain dollar amount, right? So they felt like, well, we only want to maybe cut taxes for the middle class and impoverished and stuff like that. This cut taxes across the board. Like everybody got a tax cut here, right? That's still in place today. And nobody talks about this. Everybody got a tax cut. Don't believe it? 
don't if you don't want to use this website, the TrumpWhiteHouse.gov, look on other sites. Did I receive a tax cut under Donald Trump? See for yourself. Last thing I'll mention here. Okay, first step at criminal justice reform, something that uh, of course Obama didn't do. Obama had eight years to do it. Didn't do criminal justice reform. Trump didn't do comprehensive criminal justice reform, but he did get the First Step Act passed. So this is something that was admittedly worked on before, but Trump didn't block it. He directly supported the First Step Act. So you can't just say, well, if if it wasn't his idea from inception, he doesn't get any credit because, of course, if he, let's say it was something bad, would you credit him with something that was a negative outcome? The way I see it is if you're the leader, whatever negative outcome you have you have to inherit that whatever positive outcome you have you have to inherit that and deal with that as well so first step at uh, landmark criminal justice reform legislation uh, reduced uh, recidivism and help former inmates successfully rejoin society promoted second chance hiring to give former inmates the opportunity to live crime free and find meaningful employment launched ready to work initiative to help employers directly with uh, former prisoners okay so there's lots of more details here and these are just bullet points all of these are like i mean it's literally like like tons and tons of pages like i've looked into all of these things it's a bunch of details for all of this stuff but the facts are out there guys so when it comes to well what did trump do for black people name one thing well i just named a bunch of stuff and if you look look at the scroll bar look i'm gonna go all the way to the top all the way to the top. So this is all of Trump accomplishment. But all the way to the top. Look at the scroll bar on the side. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. There's tons of things that Trump did for everyone. And tons of things that Trump did specifically for black people. I don't want to hear it. So for anybody who's like, oh, he didn't do this. He didn't do this. You're full of shit. Anyway, guys, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, you know what to do. Thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I appreciate y'all watching Black Anomaly. Rise I'm out.